We're back, we've upgraded our studio space, and GPU prices are essentially lower than ever. This whole thing feels like a fever dream. But is now actually a good time to buy a GPU? And if so, how do you pick out the good deals from the bad? Which are the cards that you should probably pounce on if you're looking to build a gaming PC for a great price? And which are the ones you should just wait out on to be replaced, upgraded, or price dropped further? Let's find out. Now, just to be clear, our studio upgrades are not finished yet, so keep your eyes peeled. But we hope you like some of the changes in store. Now, in a recent video, I talked about my prediction that AMD and Nvidia were probably set to drop GPU prices quite drastically at any moment. And that's exactly what's happened this week with Nvidia. We've seen massive price drops over in the UK this week, and the US has also followed suit. I mean, heck, Newegg, the famous US component retailer, have even launched a dedicated website called JustGPU.com for the sole purpose of putting out their GPU deals. Now, we'll come back to Newegg and JustGPU in a moment to see which of those deals are worth considering. But first, let's have a look at the UK market. The reason we're doing this is that often the UK acts as a bit of an indicator for the rest of the world, the rest of Europe, North America. When graphics cards started to come back in stock, the UK had really good stock levels for about two or three weeks, with the rest of the world following suit. Now, this might not be a pattern that always follows, but it's been a good general rule of thumb throughout the GPU crisis so far, which probably at this point is over. Now, if we look at eBuyer here in the UK, they're obviously a great partner of the channel. They made us aware of some of the deals. And if you take a look at some of the prices, things are looking pretty promising. For my US viewers as well, take into account that these prices include all of the VAT and sales taxes we pay here in the UK, which make up about 20% of the overall price. That that often means that US prices are basically one for one and that the exchange rate on Google isn't going to do you much help. Just take the figure and replace the pound sign for a dollar. That normally works anyway. If you take a look at this 3060, this is available for under £325. That's basically on or below the MSRP level of the original card and an 8 gig 3070 for under 500 Now that is seriously cheap. That is by far and away the lowest price I've seen on a 3070 so far. The pattern continues down too. If we look at this Gigabyte RTX 3080, this is coming in at under £750 for a three fan cooler, factory overclock speeds, RGB, I mean it's got all the bells and whistles and it's under £750. For another £10 more you can get one with even more RGB and an even more beefy cooling solution, while 3070 Ti's are in the £650 region. It's a similar story when we look at the RTX 3060 Ti. This Ventus 3X card from MSI with its beefy three fan cooler comes in at around £400 £50. Now to give you guys an idea, this is only around £70 or £80 more than the original MSRP for the reference design. Of course, manufacturers add their own custom cooling solutions on, which always adds additional cost. It was why often a 2060 Super from last gen would cost you 10-15% more than MSRP in normal market conditions because of the cooler that MSI, Asus, Gigabyte or others add into the mix to hopefully increase performance. Things get really interesting as well when you look at the RTX 3050, a car that we've evaluated on a number of occasions as being awesome for 1080p gaming. Take a look at this, 8 gigabyte 3050 for 280 pounds. 280 dollars if that translates into the States, which we'll look at in a moment, is one hell of a deal. Now overall, we've got some really amazing deals going on here, and it's a marker that GPU prices really are lower than they've ever been. And these aren't bad cards. This Gigabyte Eagle 2 Fan 3060 is one that we've rated as being utterly exceptional. Thermals are amazing, clock speeds are great, it's got 12 gigabytes of video memory and it's going to smash through everything at 1080p ultra or even a bit of 1440p gaming. Remember, a 3080 is great for 4k high settings, a 3070 for 4k medium and 1440p high, 3060 Ti is spot on for 1440p gaming, while the 3050 and 3060 are going to work best at 1080p. These are all incredibly powerful cards and frankly a 3070 is going to provide performance that you've not seen before if he's still rocking a 20 series GPU. Or I mean, or I mean, even a 10 or a 9 series GPU, in which case your socks are going to be well and truly knocked off. So how does this actually translate over into North America? If we run a similar search over on Newegg then and go to price low to high just to kind of sift out the RTX only GPUs, look at this, a 3050, even cheaper than in the UK, $269. And that's for the Asus dual card, which we think is actually the best 3050 you can buy. You only need two fans for this design. It's not going to overheat on anything more. 
269 US dollars. That is literally $20 above MSRP. Now, I'm not going to say that's not going to drop further, as no one really knows the market, but would I expect to see that drop by much more? Most definitely not. In fact, I'd argue there's more chance of that thing going up than there is going down. 3050s in the UK, at least, as far as I know, have been selling quite well, because obviously now they're so cheap. That makes a seven, eight hundred dollar, eight hundred pound PC build easily possible. If you can pick that up for two hundred and sixty nine dollars with taxes and shipping, you're literally off to the races. And the good news carries on through. If we scroll down and take a look at the first thirty sixty cards, boom, a thirty sixty for three hundred and sixty nine dollars. He's spending around another hundred dollars or so compared to the RTX thirty fifty. I'd argue that price is probably worth the upgrade if you've got the cash to actually be able to stomach it. Obviously, you can spend slightly more. I mean this. MSI Ventus 3060, same as what we saw over at eBar in the UK, $379. So another $10, $20 or so compared to the slightly, not crappier card, because that's a slightly harsh term, but the less beefy card is most definitely an upgrade that you might want to consider. And let's be really frank about this. If Nvidia or AMD for that fact release new GPUs next week, which is probably unlikely because the rumor mill has not quite hotted up yet enough, they're probably not going to be replacing the budget cards anyway. We're not going to see a 3050 and 3060 the replacement on day one. It never happens that way because they release the high-end cards first while the yield on the silicon chips is lower and then when the yield increases that's when they can start affording to bring out the lower-end cards. And even when that happens those cards are not going to be cheap to begin with. They are going to want to sell them at that shiny brand new GPU price premium something which could leave you a little bit hurt if you do wait for those next-gen cards. Now I'm not going to tell you to sit here today and that you have to buy a GPU because let's be honest no one really knows what's going to happen when it comes to the next generation of NVIDIA. Ada, Ada, I've still not kind of got my head around that. Or of course on AMD's RDNA 3 lineup. Now as we start to head up the GPU stack a little bit more, let's skip right to page 4. We're feeling a bit risky, feeling on the edge. And let's hopefully find ourselves some slightly more expensive cards. The first of which we can find is an RTX 3070 Gaming X Trio. One of the better RTX 3070s, this is not like a cheap version, is now at $550. That makes realistically a $1,200 build with this GPU possible. That will give you $650 for the rest of your components, like an Intel Core i5, 700 watt power supply, $50 case, 16 gigs of RAM. You're going to be off to the races with that kind of GPU for a $1,200 budget. I think some people just haven't realized how attainable some of these cards are, and I completely get it if you want to wait out for the next gen, but definitely take a look at some of the deals that are available. Let's round things off by heading over to Newegg's brand new site, Just GPU. I think this is a really cool site because it actually allows you to filter down by the exact card that you want. So let's take this RTX 3080 as an example. It's going to give us all the 3080 options. This is not like an ad for Newegg or anything like that. And if you jump in, it actually gives you all the frame rates from all the games. Times by scores and then any videos and stuff from the brands too. You can see here there's a 3080 for $780. $769 for this gigabyte white vision card. Wow, the prices are going down even further. $739 for the uh, RTX 3080 from Gigabyte. Remember our UK pricing was about 749 so really not much in it. Remember, UK more expensive typically because of all those extra sales taxes and VAT and all that jazz. Don't get me started on those. That's not a complaint we're going to have in this video. If we jump down to something like, I don't know, an RTX 3060, we should be seeing exactly the same prices on here as we saw with Newegg because it's the same company. We've got $419 for the RTX Gigabyte 3060. Drop down to 383 if you want the AMD, not the AMD, the Asus Phoenix card. A much worse GPU so I'd maybe recommend spending a bit more on like an Asus Jewel, something with a couple more fans. But to be able to do a 3060 for sub $400, really not bad. Just out of interest as well, let's have a look at what something like a 3090 Ti is going for. Now this is obviously on the extreme end of the market. This is originally like a $2,000 GPU. Wow, okay, I did not know they got that. I don't wanna say cheap, because $1,300 for a GPU is not cheap. However, $1,399 for a Supreme 3090 Ti is crazy. Crazy. I mean, six months ago, people were paying that for a 3080 and were happy that that, that that was the price they paid. And you can now buy yourself a 3090 Ti. I know the point of this video was to find good deals and to find bad deals. And I'm kind of struggling. I mean, to be honest with you, as a general rule of thumb, get a two fan or three fan card, avoid the 
one fan GPUs because RTX 3000 is a bit warm for one fan and just basically pick up the lowest price one you can find. Be a little bit more careful when it comes to RTX 3080 as there is a 10 gigabyte and a 12 gigabyte derivative. The extra VRAM will be useful and will upgrade yourself some more frames. So if the 12 gig version is less than $50 more expensive, I'd definitely pick one of those up. Now with that being said, there are probably a couple of GPUs to avoid. While the 3090 Ti deals are pretty astonishing and definitely worth considering for certain people, I can see why this is an area you probably should hold out for next generation. As you don't want to buy a card at the very, very top of the market that gets replaced by something else that's also at the very top of the market. Let's be honest, if you're spending more than $900 on a GPU, you want the best of the best. And you're not going to be happy then if your best of the best is only the best of the best for a few weeks. With that being said, I think on the lower end, on the more budget SKUs, and of course, at that mid-range with a 3070 or even a 3080, there's lots of great deals to be had. You can check out all the latest pricing and availability for these GPUs talked about at the links in the description below for a range of different retailers and different regions. With that being said, that's pretty much it. Make sure to get subscribed to see more from us. Thanks for tuning in. And as always, we'll see you in the next one.